Greetings fellow Earthlings, this is Mr. Abe from the uh, SUU Mobile Planetarium and Ashcroft Observatory. And today, for this episode, we're going to be going through the planets of the solar system. Now, we were talking about stars and constellations last time. And over a long period of time, the astronomers, the scientists studying the sky, noticed that uh, some of the stars that they were looking at would change every night. They'd look at them and they'd be at different places. And uh, they gave special names to these stars. They called them wandering stars and gave them each their own uh, special name following a theme. And uh, hundreds of years later, they discovered that these were not, in fact, stars. They were planets orbiting the sun just like we are. And uh, we'll go ahead and learn a little bit more about those. We'll start with the sun being in the center of the solar system. Go ahead and zoom in here. Oh, that's a little off. There we go. Yeah, there it is. Um, I'll rotate that a little bit so we can get a better view as I set it in motion. Um, now, rule number one with the sun don't look directly at it. Exactly it. Don't look directly at it. I'm looking directly at it. Yeah, I mean, this is fine, right? Look at look at pictures of it. That's fine. But, like, outside, you know, when we're allowed to go outside again, um, just don't look at it with your bare eyes uh, unless you've got, like, the eclipse goggles or a special solar scope. It's, it's just really damaging to your eyes to look directly at the sun. Galileo, famous astronomer, that's he went blind later in life Still. yeah he did a lot of looking directly at the sun he made some very important discoveries but it cost him his eyesight so unless you want to end up like him then we'll stick to looking at pictures and one of the questions i get a lot is what are those right spots that's uh, you're actually spot on um they're spots on the sun we actually call them sunspots right very creative and original astronomers and they're caused by sort of weather on the surface of the sun not like weather like we have you know with with clouds and rain and stuff but Sorry, just the <laughs> <laughs> you're fine you're fine we're gonna edit all of this yeah. okay um Sunspots. yes magnetic forces and solar winds etc create these little areas where there's less pressure i guess you could say and that being so they're they're dimmer and cooler than the surrounding areas in the sun they're still actually very hot and bright which you may not see very well here. They're still very hot and they're still very bright. They're just much cooler and much dimmer than the surrounding areas of the surface of the sun. So is that why they show up black on this? Yeah, because this is just, I guess these images are just set to, to pick up above a certain intensity, mm -hmm. right? And the camera. And yeah, the, the camera exposure sort of thing. And so the parts that are below that intensity just show up as black. Um, and we'll move on to the next planet in the solar, the first planet in the solar system, actually the closest one to the sun. Can anybody tell me which one that is? Mars. Mercury. Mercury. There we go. I was at like two or three. <laughs> yeah, you're, you were, you're, you're in there. You're in the right zone. Um, we'll zoom in here. I was zooming a little bit farther on this one. And I'll go ahead and freeze frame there. Now, Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. And it kind of looks like the moon, doesn't it? A little bit. A little bit, because it's in sort of a similar situation as the moon. It's very small, like the moon is on a, on a planetary scale. And it uh, doesn't have much of an atmosphere. It's so close to the sun, it's constantly blasted by the sun's rays, and it has such low gravity that it never really had a chance for an atmosphere to form. 
And so it's constantly getting bombarded by meteors, by big space rocks coming in, uh, which is why it gets these craters all over, which makes it look kind of like the surface of the moon. Now, Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, but it is not the hottest planet in the solar system. That would be the second planet, which is Venus. Go ahead and zoom in on Venus. And now it's just sort of a smooth surface, right? When we look at Venus, because we're not actually looking at the surface of Venus in this image. We're just looking at the upper atmosphere. Um, because the reason it is so hot, it gets up to something like 700 degrees Fahrenheit because it has a lot of greenhouse gases you heard of greenhouse gases, I'm sure. Um, they trap all the heat in, like rolling up your, your windows in your car in the summertime, traps all the heat inside, the heat from the sun. And you get that greenhouse effect. You get those super high temperatures. And there's active volcanoes and acid rain and noxious gases. And there's a lot of reasons why I never want to go to Venus. <laughs> they they actually have a hard time building robots strong enough to survive on Venus longer than a few minutes. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Things start melting. Things start yes. oxidizing. It's really bad. Okay. Yes. So our atmosphere is like kind of deteriorating. The like ozone layer. Mm -hmm. Does Venus have one of those that, well, like, because of the heat, that started deteriorating? Um, I'm not sure. I don't. Environmental chemistry isn't my big thing. Um, but I know that the reasons for our ozone layer depletion is chemical, right? We released some bad chemicals into the air, and it thinned out the ozone layer. Um, and it's actually replenishing right now because we stopped doing what we were doing. Uh, but there is a lot of, if I remember correctly, I might edit this out, if I remember correctly, there is a lot of carbon dioxide in Venus's atmosphere, which is the big, one of the big greenhouse gases that's affecting us right now. Mm -hmm. As in, we have mostly nitrogen and oxygen, and we're getting increasing levels of carbon dioxide. Well, Venus ha already has a lot of carbon dioxide, just naturally. And so, you know, if we keep if we keep at the pace we're at, we may someday end up looking like Venus. Neat. Neat. Yeah. Now the third planet in the solar system is Earth, but I'm going to leave Earth for later. And we will, let's see, I'll leave the moon for another episode. And we will skip Earth and go to the fourth planet in the solar system, which is, it was mentioned earlier? Mars. Mars. That's why we can Not Mars. See it Mars. Next episode. Yep. We can actually see um, all of the planets in the solar system except for two with the naked eye. Well, it's, Mercury gets really tricky to see, but technically, yeah. So zoomed in here on Mars. It's called the red planet. Why is it called the red planet? Because it's red. Because it's red. red. Yeah, very creative <laughs> and original, again, with the astronomers, right? Uh, we can see one... There we go. Two of its moons there. It has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. And it's barely visible in this image. You can see right there, there's a, bit of, there's a white spot right there on Mars. Do you see that? That was just sort of white, right? Yeah, just like a little white sliver right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, Mars is mostly dry, but it does have some water that gathers as ice on the North and South Poles, just like we have ice caps on our North and South Poles. Um, Mars doesn't, doesn't have much of an atmosphere, doesn't have much moisture on it, but it does have some ice, and it gathers in the colder parts of the planet. And then on top of that, um, dry ice, or frozen, uh, frozen carbon dioxide, gathers in sheets on top of that uh, water ice. Uh, but as for the rest of Mars, it's red because of the iron in the soil. 
right? So when iron rusts or oxidizes, it turns that that rusty red, that, that orangey color, which is the same color as Mars. So all that iron in the soil has oxidized, it's rusted, and it turned red. Interesting.